Hello everyone, I'm Etienne Homesel. I work at HGH Infrared Systems. I'm an Optronics project manager there. And so today I'm going to talk to you about an SPIE paper uh, we wrote, we've written about improved modulation transfer function evaluation method of a camera at any field point with a scanning tilted knife edge. So we're going to talk about three main topics. First of all, we're going to do a reminder of the definition of the modulation transfer function and its application. So modulation transfer function or MTF. We're going to talk about existing MTF measurement methods which are commonly used. And then we're going to present the new HGH new scanning technique of the MTF measurements by presenting the simulations and first experimental results. So first of all, a brief reminder of uh, HGH company preview. <clears throat> we have more than 50 years of excellence in infrared technologies. Uh, we develop uh, innovative electro-optic solutions for three main markets. First one is infrared panoramic surveillance. Uh, we do industrial thermography so th or thermal process monitoring. And we are also implied, Im Im implied in test and measurement benches, what we call TNM, test and measurement. So for these applications, we design, develop and manufacture infrared reference sources and test benches, test benches for various applications. Uh, inside one of these 10 benches, we are able to do MTF measurements. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So what is the MTF or modulation transfer function? So MTF represents the capacity of an optical system to image an object uh, the contrast of an object onto from the object space to the image space. In order to understand what MTF is, let's take a theoretical object, which is a sine wave, which at a certain frequency, and the, the sine wave at the top of the sine wave we have uh, flux which goes through the object, and at the bottom of the sine wave we have no flux. This object imaged through the optical system will give a sine wave object with a little less contrast. So the high values of the flux will be a bit lower than the, at the, in the object space and the bottom values of the object will be a little higher. So we can define a contrast, an image contrast, and if we plot for each frequency uh, object frequency, the contrast according to this frequency, we obtain what we call the MTF. So what are the different applications <coughs> of MTF? First of all, this enables us to evaluate the special resolution of an optical system. So here you have an example of MTF curves for one of our collimators, 300, 1500, at different field of views. So we have the on-axis MTF, which is very close to diffraction limit. And as we go into the field of view, we have a slight degraded <coughs> MTF curves. Other applications of MTF is for detection recognition identification ranges in infrared. We can, if we plot the MRTD curve, which is directly linked to the MTF curve and NETD, uh, uh, NETD values of the of the camera. If we plot this MRTD in the same graph as the apparent temperature of an object, we can define uh, the detection, recognition and identification ranges of this system. Another very interesting application of the modulation transfer function is that thanks to this we can optimize the camera settings, for example focusing. So here we have an example of an image <coughs> of a knife, slanted knife edge onto a camera and as we can see the blur uh, what if the camera is not focused we have a blur on this edge and that directly is represented by the blue MTF curve which is degraded so with low MTF values so by optimizing this MTF curve 
meaning that we set the camera so that the MTF is as high as possible for all the frequencies, we are able to set the focus and be sure that the camera is well focused. So now let's talk about existing MTF measurement methods. The first historical MTF uh, measurement method is the imaging slit technique. So we take an adjustable slit here, which we collimate thanks to a collimator. This collimated beam or slit image goes through the lens on the test we wish to test. So it's imaged in its back focal plane of the lens. And this image is then refocused onto a camera thanks to a microscope objective here so that we have the image of the slit through the whole system. With the slit image, if we do a horizontal slice of this slit, we obtain the line spread function or LSF. And if we have evaluate the fast Fourier transform, the absolute value of a fast Fourier transform of this uh, LSF, we obtain the MTF in the X direction of the system. So there are many parameters linked to, linked to the complexity of this experimental protocol which enables us to measure the MTF of the LUT, lens on the test. Some of these parameters are the sizes of slits, and the MTF we actually measure is the product of many MTFs. We have the MTF of the collimator, the MTF of the microscope objective, and the MTF of the camera. So if we want to have perfect information on the MTF of the LUT, we must have knowledge of each and every MTF of the subsystem and also the cutoff frequency of each MTF must, must be much higher than the MTF of the LUT. Without this, uh, without this element, we would not be able to measure uh, completely the MTF of the LUT. A second way of measuring MTF is by imaging a slanted knife edge, which you can see here. What we do is we image the knife edge onto the UUT, unit on the test, or camera, and we define a region of interest around the, the imaged slant, uh, slanted edge. With a certain algorithm, we are able to recover the edge spread function. So if we slice this according to the x direction, this, this image on the, on the region of interest according to the x direction, we obtain the edge spread function. If we derive the ESF according to the x direction, we obtain the line spread function. And if we do the absolute value of the fast Fourier transform, we obtain the MTF in the x direction. This experimental protocol only needs one specific target and not multiple targets like with the slit method. And we also have always, we can always set a correct level of signal so that the image is correct in order for us to reconstruct the edge spread function. <clears throat> the main drawback of this method is the algorithm used to obtain the edge spread function from the pixels in the region of interest. One of these methods currently used is a sort function. So we sort each pixels inside the region of interest from lowest level to highest level. And this means that the slant of the knife edge, which is here, is equivalent virtually to a subpixelic scan, which enables us to recover the useful value of the ESF curve. So typically, if we have a slant angle of 7.125 degrees, we would have a virtual uh, delta x step scan, which would be around the pixel pitch divided by 8 for a square uh, pixel for a camera with square pixels. So this would mean that we would need eight lines inside the region of interest in order for us to recover a, co a correct edge spread function. The main drawback of these issues is you can have high errors on the, on the system, on the measurements, if you have non-uniformity issues on the region of interest. So if you have a detector with uh, non-uniformity issues, which can be the case for infrared detectors, and also if you have bad pixels inside the system. To show this and illustrate this, here we've drawn the edge spread function evaluated for a uh, camera with non-uniformity pixels and with bad pixels. So the non-uniformity pixels on the edge spread function 
will cause this high frequency non-physical wave on the useful parts of the edge band function and the bad pixels will provoke these <coughs> these non-physical uh, effects on the edges of the edge spread function curve. If you derive the edge spread function to obtain the line spread function, you will obtain these high frequency peaks onto the LSF and also on the boundaries of the curve, this non-physical effect. So this could have made many drawbacks on accuracy of the, of the measurements and big effects. Here you have an example of a real measurement where you have the LSF which is reconstructed with the main bound here and here you have a non-physical bound linked to non-uniformity inside the camera. This has a direct consequence on the MTF curve. You can see that there's a high frequency pattern onto the MTF curve which is of course not physical. Well, we can note that we can have up to 10% error on the MTF at Nyquist frequency only just linked to this method. So, <clears throat> the idea now, that being said, with the techniques being explained, is the idea is to find a new technique for MTF measurements, which enables to have high accuracy on the MTF and which has a simple operating mode that in order to limit the experimental protocol, not having too many systems, so that we can have a simple and accurate MTF measurement. The idea is to vertically scan a pixel with the slanted knife edge. So here you have the scanned pixel, which is in the square here, and here you have the image of the knife edge, which is vertically translated step by step uh, <clears throat> to, onto the scan pixel. So we have here an illustration of the knife edge in the first position, which covers the yellow parts of the pixel in position one. And then the uh, position two, the knife edge goes, is translated a bit down. So the knife edge covers surface two of the pixel. And then in position three, the knife edge covers nearly the whole pixel. What we can see is that a vertical scan of the knife edge, of a slanted knife edge, is equivalent to a horizontal scan of this knife edge onto the pixel. So how do we practically implement this scanning method? The idea is to use, to input a slanted knife edge onto a high resolution target wheel which is, which is placed in the focus plane of our collimators and to use this high resolution rotation as a, as a vertical translation. This means that if we rotate very thinly the, the knife edge around the target wheel axis, this will be equivalent to a vertical scan of the target inside the focal plane of the collimator. And so the rotation is assimilated to a translation at the pattern location. So here you have the image of a HGH target wheel, high resolution. And here you have the image of what the UUT, unit on the test, or camera on the test, is seeing through the collimator. So this method enables us to uh, use existing configuration uh, to do the scan because this target wheel is also used uh, to select the target according to the test the client or the user wants to do. And there's no risk of errors due to non-uniformity and bad pixels because we scan only one pixel and we don't do spatial reconstruction uh, of a region of interest inside the camera uh, detector. So in order to first check that the <coughs> MTF and the new scanning technique works, we did some simulations. How did we do these simulations? We first evaluated the MTF of a reference UUT, a perfect UUT, with a perfect lens, with a perfect lens, so a diffraction limited lens. What we can say is that the MTF of the reference UUT is equal to the MTF of the lens times the MTF of the detector. We can easily evaluate the MTF of the lens because by definition, since the lens is diffraction limit, we know it's PSF thanks to the ARI function, which is reminded here. 
and by doing the fast Fourier transform of the, this PSF, we obtain the MTF of the lens. And the MTF of the detector is very easily uh, found also. It's just basically the Fourier, fast Fourier transform or the FFT of a square function. So we have perfect knowledge of a reference UUT, a perfect UUT. Now the idea is to, is to simulate the uh, edge spread function through the same UUT. <clears throat> so what we do is with the step, the X step of linked to the uh, scan. And so we are able to obtain this edge spread function. By deriving this edge spread function, we are able to determine the line spread function. And by doing the fast Fourier transform of this line spread function, we obtain the simulated uh, UUT or camera on the t unit on the test or camera on the test MTF. So here are the simulation, the results of these simulations. We have here first curves here where in red we have the reference UUT MTF, MTF UUT. And in gray or black, we have the simulated MTF. In order to evaluate accuracy of the algorithm, what we do is subtract these two curves and we obtain the error of the MTF, which is here. If we evaluate the standard deviation of this error curve, we obtain what we call the accuracy, which is in this case better than 1%. So this comforts us in the fact that this method is accurate in its algorithm. So now it's time to test it. So we did an actual measurement of the MTF on a camera using this scanning method. So the UUT we used is a Sony camera, which reference is here, used in bend mode. And we screwed on this visible camera an objective lens from Edmund Optics, which has an F number of 8 and a focal length of theoretically 100 millimeters. We have the uh, supplier gave us the theoretical MTF of this UUT or the lens. And so we use this data that is given on, which is the theoretical MTF of the, of the lens in order to calculate the theoretical MTF curve we, we should obtain. Here you have an example of an image used for this measurement. So here you have the slanted knife edge. The green star is the alanized pixel, which is scanned. We do a target wheel, which is rotating very thinly, very with high resolution, which is equivalent to a horizontal scan of this pixel. So here are the first results. You have here in red the theoretical MTF, which is used from the data we have, and the black or gray FTM MTF, which is the measured MTF. First thing we can see is that the cutoff frequency of the two curves are very close. So this comforts us in the fact that the measurement is coherent. And so <clears throat> we are very uh, happy for of this first uh, analysis. Nevertheless, we see that there's a big difference at the Nyquist frequency. We at 25 cycle per millimeters, we see that there's more than 10% uh, difference <clears throat> of MTF curve. This could be linked to many aspects. Either the camera is not well focused during the test, and also the supplier does, gives out uh, MTF curves, which are accurate, not, not better than 10%. So as a conclusion, we did some simulations that demonstrated that the selected algorithm leads to MTF curves and values with a 1% accuracy. So this comforts us in the fact that the method is good. In order to demonstrate practically this accuracy, we would need to have a highly qualified camera, which is considered as a reference camera. So this would mean that the camera would, uh, would need to have MTF measurements on another bench with the precision better than 1%. Unfortunately, these kinds of equipment are very challenging to find and the need to be qualified on a reference and valid test bench. And that's a real challenge. And, uh, Last but not least, a possible improvement of this method would be to take into account that the slant angle alpha of the knife edge is not constant during the rotation, and we could take this into account in the algorithm in order to increase accuracy.
So thanks to, for having listened to me. I hope the, the subject interests you. Don't hesitate to contact us if you have any more questions. Bye.